I'll just give a small uh, introduction of Dr. Shahaji. Uh, he is the Chief of Pediatrics, Baby Memorial Hospital, Kerala, Chair, the Down Syndrome Trust, hmm. those, and Patron of Kerala yes, State DS Support Group. And he has been the Co-Chair of Scientific Committee of World Down Syndrome Congress 2015. Asia Pacific Down Syndrome Federation acting member since its inception and he has chaired the Down, Asia Pacific Down Syndrome side. Federation in Singapore 2016. He is also the chair of Asia Pacific Down Syndrome Federation Medical Group since 2015 and 2016. So would I ask Request Dr. Shahi to give his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Linda. The topic that I am going to talk on is the challenges that I have faced both as a father and as a doctor dealing with persons with Down syndrome since the year 2000. A baby is born with a lot of expectations. And then, what do you do? My problem was how do I convey this to my wife? As a doctor, the moment I saw the baby, I knew it was a person child with Down syndrome. But hoping against hope, I wanted it to be something different. Maybe I was wrong. So I got out of my friend with an assistant professor in the medical college. Dr. Abdul Shukur, and I told him, look here, my wife has delivered, could you please come and have a look? He came over, saw the baby, didn't know what to tell me. I said, well, you don't have to be very cautious, I know it's a case of Down syndrome. He said, yes, Shadi, it's a case of Down syndrome. But the question is, what do I tell my wife? I came to her, the first question that she asked me was, can our daughter go to school as our elder daughter? That means she knew something about it, just looking at the baby. I kept quiet. I didn't know what to say. I can neither say no, neither can I say yes. And she understood what then how do I support her? What do I do? What do I tell her to uh, see if something is, is, is going to be not that bleak? And how do I answer the questions? This was the greatest challenge as a parent and as a doctor when my baby was born. What do I tell my elder daughter? Well, you have a Child, a sister who is intellectually impaired, how she going to take it? How do I answer my friends? There are people who came and told my wife, look here, isn't your husband a pediatrician? But how is that you have a child like this? Can not you show it to someone else? Maybe the pediatrician, her uh, husband pediatrician is not good enough. So this is something what we face, this is something what I find my patients, parents also face. They go to ask her blown, blandly, look here, why is your child not walking? Have you shown it to a doctor? Yes, then why don't you show it to somebody else? Maybe it's something good in a way that people are concerned about you. In the West, nobody will ever bother asking you about that. But these are the things which we have got to be careful about. We have got to be prepared. Early intervention. We are talking about early intervention. But sadly enough, I have more than 700 patients, 800 patients. The friends since 2000, a person is a Down syndrome. I have been following up. And what I found out that 50% of them are not diagnosed at birth. 25% of them have been not told that you have a child with Down syndrome. Within the bargain, 75% of the people 
are not given early intervention. The problem is, even if they tell you that you have a person with Down syndrome, uh, many of the doctors don't know what to say. Nothing can be done. The cruelest statement. And because nothing can be some, done, they go to other systems of medicine and well, nothing is done. How about education and schooling? Kirtan is a challenge. People used to believe that such children should only be catered to in a special school. So we were teaching them to the contrary. Some of the problems the parents said is, my child is six years old, the parents are in there. The neighbors are asking me, why are you not sending the child to school? So then, I'm forced to send the child to a special school. What we advise them is, give them proper training, teach them how to learn and write, and then send them to a normal school by seven, eight or nine years. But then, that again is a challenge. Vocational training, what do you do? We don't have any centers, I won't say any centers, we have only few centers all over India. Even the place where I am coming from, Calcutta, and working there since 2000, there aren't many, there are centers, but not the way we would want them to run. A job impossible in the previous years. But I am happy to say, in Calcutta, the last one year, almost a dozen children have been put up for jobs in various places. By sensitizing them and making them understand the potential of people with Down syndrome, people didn't want to marry the sister of a person with Down syndrome. Even doctors refused. I know an EMD surgeon who just went away because of this. And even a parent who was very much keen on getting his son married, finally his relative who was a teacher said, don't marry. Well, ultimately, God was great. She got married to the son of a doctor couple. And the Christian, what next? That is something which he got to address. Well, what next? The question that turned me upside down is why are the doctors so cruel? Years back in 1995 or 96, a mother came with a child to me for respiratory infection. I treated the respiratory infection. I was not sure whether the mother knew that the child had Down syndrome. The child also had a cardiac problem. Even that, I wasn't sure. I didn't know how to convey the message. I said, okay, come back after a week. I will talk to you. He said, okay. And she said, my child has Down syndrome, isn't it? Oh, I was only, okay, half the job is over. The next question was, he has a cardiac problem also. Yes, I said, we'll talk about it next week. Then there was one question which she asked me, Sir, why are all the doctors so cruel? I was taken aback. I thought something which I did hurt her. I said, what happened? What did they do? I said, no, no, I have taken this child all over South India. Various cities in South India. They just look at the child and say, oh, this is a case of Down syndrome. It may be one in each other for you, but it's 100% for me. Well, I sat thinking about it. The lady is here right in front of us. The person who turned it the upside down. Uh, Dr. Anita is also the, a small child. Maybe she's somewhere on the campus. Uh, Usha and Ramdas. Yes, Ramdas is there. Usha, could you please stand up? Now, this is the lady who turned me upside down in the year 1995. And then I knew that something had to be done. Something has to be done for these people because the doctors were ignorant, everybody was ignorant. So I started the Down syndrome press in the year 2000. So I am talking about her in all the uh, lectures which I had a chance to. Why did I start this program in 2000? Found out that caretakers were in the duck. A person with Down syndrome, the parents didn't know what to do. 
and it can provide us with a mirror and an experience. Oh, this is a Down syndrome. Nothing can be done. This is a piece of meat with life in it. Why a dog? So the child will go with the dog. These are all real life instances which are quoted to me by the parents about what the doctors have told me. So I had to educate the doctors also. The society was really different. They used to keep the children away. Intellectually disabled. That's the term. Early children was a mental retardation. And the government was just not bothered. There were other things in mind. So, more and more challenges. Early detection and intervention. For that, I have to tell the doctors, look here, you diagnose early and tell that to the parents. Because many of the doctors did not know how to convey the message. One look, they say they know that it's a Down syndrome. How do they convey the message to the mother? They tell the mother's father, and she will say, Okay, don't bother, don't tell her now, she will be disappointed. I tell her later, and that never happens. And many of the children are diagnosed when they go for their first shots, the immunization shots at six weeks, or even as late as six months and one year, when they're not aware of it. The most important aspect was the intervention programs, telling them all these things and making the parents continue the program. That was my greatest challenge. You tell them the child needs speech therapy, immediately the next bus they go to Mysore, from Kerala, Mysore is pretty close, to the National Institute of Speech. They stay there for three months, come back, that's it. No more therapy is given. So I tell them, suppose you want to send the child to a school. You go to the best school, put them in for three months, and come back and do nothing. Do you think that has any benefit? Of course, if you can stay in Mysore and do it, fine. But for three months or six months of Mysore is not going to help you. Find out the speech that is near your place. Somebody who is considering it. And then do it for pretty long. I found children be, had to be given for 8, 9, 10 years because, before their vocabulary can be because clear. They start speaking without any of those things from what they hear from the house. But this is a challenge. And from the clutches of the greedy, originally therapist. The moment you say nothing can be done, there are originally therapists who are willing to take advantage of this person. I know a, a mother who went to Cochin, there was an orthopedic therapist, charged 10,000 every month for three months, at the end of three months, the child started walking. The child would have started walking, even if you had given the still water. And later on came the papers, he was an engineer, running the show with an MBA daughter, and he believed everything was because of virus. So people are fooled, but then you can't blame the, blame the parents but a doctor says nothing can be done. You have various intervention therapies that can be done. To school or not to school, that again is a great challenge. As I mentioned, six years in Kerala till ten years, anybody can bring your child and put them in the first standard. The headmaster or the principal, as is known now, cannot say no. I think this is a case of India. The marriages of siblings, how do you handle that? Nuclear families, earlier when you had a big family, there will be somebody to comfort the parent or somebody to look after the child. Here, the father and mother both working. And what is it? A sickness in the family, what do you do with the child? Somebody is sick, hospitalized. You go to attend to the, your spouse, who's to come the child? Travel issues. Traveling is a big problem. And, well, there was a country which refused to give a visa to a child because the child was a uh, had Down syndrome. The opportunities are numerous. What we need is an inclusive health facility. And that, I, I know, years back, when I was educating cardiac surgery for children with Down syndrome who had cardiac problem, there were cardiac surgeons who refused to do that, stating that 
But anyway, the child has got the answer from our priorities are different. But now, I have been able to change that. I mean, all over India, everybody is changing. Inclusive school environment, as I told you. Special school versus a normal school. Inclusive workplace. More, more, more people are trying to understand their capabilities. One of my senior professors, well, after I started this Down syndrome test, he was giving me a lecture. He said, I have been to Switzerland for a holiday and I visited a watch factory, a Swiss watches of famous. And I saw a child with Down syndrome assembling the watches. I was shocked. I called the manager and said, Look here, your Swiss watches are fa famous. Is this the way you want to do it? The manager said, Sir, these children do it perfectly. They don't ask you why a particular wheel or comment is kept there. They have been taught to teach with them, they are doing better than others. And we pay them the same salary. So that is it. People have started recognizing them. And then we have we have inclusive workplaces. And an inclusive society is what we need. People would accept them. Not keep them away. A part of the society. They just have an extra chromosome. That's all. You have an excess, you are a female, you are X, Y, you are a female, you are a male, and you have an XXX, or you have a, a trisomy 21. That's it. It's all the same. It is all acceptance that is required. The need is the awareness. We who have come here should spread that awareness after we go back to our places. There should be more and more facilities for early intervention and the motivation to continue therapies. As I mentioned, people want a capsule, I right? say, one capsule twice a day for 30 days, they will do it. Or one tablet once a day for one year, they will do it. But you tell them, go to a therapist five days a week for one year, they'll stop it after three months. So that's the motivation. And the awareness and motivation of potential employees and keep reminding the government. A lot of fund is being allotted and more than half is swindled by the panchayats for their personal needs. Now again awareness has come in. 28,500 rupees is given to each person with intellectual disability by the government. They used to give only about four or five thousand and they died of other things. But we were able to Take it with the help of our support group. Well, the support group. This is a flashback by persons with Down syndrome, and I was also there in Kerala. We need a support group. So that is the most important aspect. Because there, nobody is there to speak for them. There are no unions for them. Who else can support them? The parents, the caretakers, the caregivers. So this is something, go back and have a support group. I found a support group in 2000 and later on a couple of years I thought, well, what's happening? Nothing is there. So I said, okay, I'm going to wind up the support group because I've got a free clinic, I do an education aspect, so many things I have doing. So I said, okay, let's wind up the support group. Then one of the parents stood up and said, doctor, please don't do that. You can wind up all your other projects, your free clinic, everything. This is the greatest thing that has happened to us. Meeting people. Encouraging each other. And we have been coming with that every month or every second Sunday from 3.30 to 5 for the last 17 plus years. So have a support group. That's the greatest thing you can do. And a motivated parent. This is one of our children there, Dhanya, who uh, has won several prizes at the school level in Bharatanatya. She's a person with Down syndrome. Motivated parents like a father, Mr. Vijay. Motivated parents like here and others who take it up as challenge. Well, this is the case of Down syndrome. This is my child. I am going to take it as a challenge. And we are able to see success after success with such parents. We need a change. And let me tell you take a decision that we are the change. We are going to produce a change. For the whole country, we go back and tell them, look here, we're going to do something for these parents, these children. 
Have a support group and let him pick up. We'll fight for him. Well, and all the banners, we will fight for them. These two gentlemen are also here in this group. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, my son is 21 years old and uh, it's true that doctors don't tell us the correct thing. Uh, we were lucky, my cousin is a pediatrician. He spotted the moment I delivered the child and uh, we began with the work. But uh, uh, I had to attend to some other pediatrician when, in the absence of my cousin. Uh, he said, ye to buddhu hai. Ye pagal hai, iska kuch nahi hoega. Nothing can be done about it. But I am proud today, like uh, we, I am a teacher, so I used my those skills to educate him and to work on him. And uh, at present, past two months, he has been working, selected in judiciary as a supporting staff, and he has been working well out there. And we had friends with so many, the whole is talking to him. It's a request to all the parents, it's the hard work which you are going to put in for the child, which will show you the that is Thank you, that's wonderful. I got demand for all the pediatricians. I'm a pediatrician. I do apologize.